Hey, welcome to an episode of Chad's Beer Reviews, and we got a new guest reviewer, Madison Smith of WinoBureauFudo.com. How you doing, Madison? Hello, good to see you. Now, you are out there on the West Coast in Davis, California, right? Yes, all the way out in Davis. And from what I understand, you're not too far from where this beer is made. It's the Sierra Nevada's Ovila. Exactly, and I have a lot of friends that have toured the brewery recently, but I didn't get to go, so sometime soon. Must be nice. <laughs> yeah. Living And yeah. plus you're close to Russian River, too. Yes, which is high on my list as well. Mm-hmm. Well, on to this beer. This is uh, the Ovila Double. It's uh, in collaboration with the Abbey of New Clairvaux, brewed and bottled by Sierra Nevada Brewing Company, Chico, California. It's a mm-hmm. uh, 7.5% ABV. And it's a, a Belgian double, kind of like Chimay Red. It doesn't look on cam- like on camera it looks dark brown, but in real life it's more of a bright orange. Yeah, it's it's more golden, but it is pretty thick and dark. You really you can't see through it. Yeah, it's pretty uh-huh. hazy. I see a lot of I see little tiny carbonation in there. Yeah, it's actually it looks pretty heavily carbonated. I got about a one finger head. It's uh, mm-hmm. kind of yellow, like foamy, frothy, I guess. Yeah, a little bit straw. What do you get for aroma? It smells similar to the Belgian doubles, getting kind of fruit. Yeah, and it's pretty um, caramelized too. Yeah. Um, I do get kind of like a a sugary kind of syrup almost. Yeah, like um, caramelized apples, like if you were to make them at home, like you were trying to make your own applesauce or something, you're cooking down the apples. Yeah. I get like plum and maybe fig too. Mmm, fig, yeah. That's a good one. I can smell the malts too. I mean, it just kind of smells, you can just smell the kind of the grain in this. Yeah, you can. It's definitely got some yeasty aspects to it. Yeah. Well, you ready to uh, dive into this? Mm-hmm. All yep. Right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> huh. It's not quite Thanks. as robust as I thought it was going to be. You know, it started off on a really good note from me and like fills your whole mouth and part of that might be how much carbonation there is yeah but then it's like the carbonation sort of bubbled away all the flavor and just sort of took it away with it yeah yeah it's like kind of yeah like the head's like all fizzing up in the mouth or whatever it yeah i mean i wouldn't call it it's definitely not watery it's definitely it's just like it's like oh. lacking energy the caramel, the fruit that we had on the aroma, really just don't follow through on the taste. It's very I mean, smooth and velvety, though, especially for this kind of Belgian style of beer. Mm-hmm. Very interesting, though. Yeah, I'm very disappointed by the carbonation and what it does, though. Um, it almost burns my tongue the way it <laughs> fills up and then just like takes everything away. Yeah. Um, I don't know about that. I'm getting like, you know, kind of like a... Some of the things we said in the nose, like the the kind of red, dark fruits, um, mm-hmm. they're there, but like they're very mild. It's, um... It seems like somebody has like the volume turned down on this one. They just need to crank up the, the energy, you know? Yeah. I almost have a feeling that it's going to be better once it's sat out and been open for like five minutes. Like yeah. warmed up and lost some carbonation. I think I might like it more at that point. I get I kind of like a a soda kind of sweetness on here. Mm-hmm. Do you get that? It definitely does have a fair amount of sweetness. Sort of in keeping with the whole caramelized kind of aromas that we had. There's really not much bitterness here at all, so I'm not getting really any hops the aftertaste is it's slightly fruity but i mean i wouldn't say it finishes completely clean but it's not drying me out either 
No, I mean, the finish, to me, I think about straw. Like, if I had just eaten a whole mouthful of straw, I'm not sure what that would be like, but, like, retronasal, I don't know if you talk about that much, but <laughs> when you close when your you mouth and you breathe out. back yeah. out your nose and you get all the different aromas, that's one of my fav- favorite parts of tasting because it's completely different than what you get orthonasal a lot of times. What kind of uh, foods would you pair with this? You know, I would do foods that definitely have high fat contents because this would easily clean your mouth out and make it ready for another bite. Sometimes when you eat heavy dishes like a chicken alfredo or something, I don't I don't know if I would necessarily pick that. Um, but something with like a creamy sauce. See, I was thinking this would be more of like a dessert beer you'd have like with maybe cheesecake, plain cheesecake, or maybe strawberry cheesecake or cherry cheesecake. Sure. Well, I like that idea, too, because so you have these fatty dishes. They coat your whole mouth, and after you've had a few bites, sometimes it's sort of hard to keep eating. Yeah. But if you have some type of alcohol that sort of cleans your whole mouth out, then you enjoy both more. Yeah. So. Just a... Oh, uh, sounds good. Just a quick note on the drinkability here. I think it's it's highly drinkable. And it's almost kind of refreshing too. Mm-hmm. I think it's because it's it's so overtly mild, you know. Like I mean, I could just sit and just drink this, and it's a uh, what was it, seven point five percent ABV. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not to me. That's not a very strong beer. It's not a weak beer either. Um, you know, I'm not getting. I'm definitely not tasting, smelling, feeling any alcohol. Um, I mean, I could easily kill this entire bottle myself and still you know have no problem driving or whatever but uh me (laughs) i definitely could not (laughs) but i do agree i think it is very drinkable and the fact that you can't taste the alcohol you can't feel any burn means it's pretty balanced and it would sneak up on you yeah uh sneak up on me anyway (laughs) yeah well i think it would hit you like a ton of bricks and it'll sneak (laughs) up on me As of this drink right here, I'm tempted to go kind of low, like maybe a six. So I'm kind of like six, six and a half, seven. What are you thinking? You don't have to go by my rating scale. So I'm, you know, like kind of like a C plus to B minus, maybe B tops, you know? I, I sort of agree. I mean, I think, yeah, it's a drinkable beer. Yeah, it's a pleasant experience. But this thing, I've heard epic reviews about. I think... It has gotten a lot of really good reviews from people, so I expected more from it. It just isn't really doing it for me. I probably I agree with you. Um, I probably wouldn't even give it a B. I think it's a C, solid C beer. I'll really? enjoy it any day of the week, but there are plenty of other beers that I would choose over this one, even for just drinkability. Not even a C plus. No C. Wow. <laughs> yep. You're hardcore. Well. <laughs> So um, just to recap really quick, we both thought this beer was like kind of okay, definitely didn't live up to expectations. It's definitely nothing like an authentic Trappist double or really any kind of Belgian beer, really. It's uh, it's not a bad beer by any means. It's just it's too mild for its own good. Would you agree with that? Or I, I would, absolutely. I think they could have taken it another step and they didn't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened with this one, but uh, I just mean, honestly give it a thumbs up. So that's why I'm going six, but uh, you know, just kind of barely. So, mm-hmm. um, and I went five, which is a thumb to the side. <laughs> yeah. All right. So thanks to Madison, a- aka Wino Bureau Fudo, dot com, for Thank joining you. me, and uh, stick around because we're gonna do another interview with a craft beer enthusiast. So, cheers. Cheers.